Welcome to this short introduction to our new uh, software product, Palette Manager, available at palettemanager.com. Uh, it's an entry level system. In fact, uh, it's free for the first four users uh, and very cheap for users thereafter. But it's actually pretty functional. It includes almost all the stuff we have developed over the last 10 years in building similar systems for some of the biggest garment specifiers on the planet. Uh, what does it do therefore? Well, it allows you to manage palettes, it allows you to uh, search for colors to put onto palettes, it allows you to add colors to palettes, to print palettes, export palettes, edit palettes, share palettes, whatever. It also, however, allows you to uh, assign individual colors or whole palettes to your vendors and have them submit lab dips or bulks against them. You can see the color, you can see the color difference, you can see the reflectance curves, you can see everything uh, to manage the loops and you can then approve, reject, uh, whatever and go through the loop process. It manages, in other words, the whole color approval process for lab dips and bulks and, what, and similar. Right, uh, let me show you what happens in the software. If you register uh, as the first user uh, for your team, you will be the palette controller. You will be in charge. Um, I will show you what you can do with palettes, and then I'll go through the other users and how you go through the color approval process. You can create a palette, but uh, I've already created one for you. More importantly, though, before you can add colors to palettes, you have to have colors in your library. This is a library. You've got three on the system. Uh, we've only put colors in the first one. How do you get the colors in there? Well, you have to upload either a QTX file or a CXF file. In other words, reflectance data. Typically, you would get this reflectance data from uh, a color standards provider, but you could measure it or get it from anyone who happens to have some measurements of colors you want to add to your palette. You can add them as you go along, so it's not you don't have to get them all at once to start. Okay, you can then add description fields, change the names of the description fields and everything else. You can sort and filter on those and the like. So now we have uh, a palette, colors in the library and a palette to work with. This is a fairly big palette. There are several pages to this, by the way. It's not there are, it goes on to page four or five, so that's if you wonder where all the colors are showing up. Uh, if we look at the palette in this fancy 3D display, uh, you will see that it's quite a, bit, a full palette, but it doesn't have so many greens in it, so we probably want to add greens. This is rather a sexy display. As you can see, it shows the uh, LAB values of all the colors. In fact, if we stop it, and go back to the, the fixed version. You can still move it around, but uh, if you actually click on one of the colors and give it a second, um, then that color will become the, if I can get it to do it, there we go, the uh, center of the 3D display, and you will then be able to see the delta L's and delta A's and etc. of and delta E's of all the other colors to it. So very cute. Let's go back to that palette and add some greens. How could we do that? Well, one thing we could do is simply type green and choose which library we're searching. Uh, and then perhaps the trouble is it doesn't let you add the color more than once to a palette. And OK, dirt green hadn't been added before. So uh, we've just added dirt green to the palette. We can also go through the, 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 the libraries are actually sorted into color groups so we can also go through uh, the colors by grouping and add them from there perhaps more interesting we can also do a color data search so if we do a color data search of uh, 34 and say 25 hopefully that will give us a green search yes so i've that's the, the background is the target color I gave it. Uh, and this is my these are my closest um, library colors to that search. That's there you are. It just told me I've already got that one in. But you get the print of the picture, I hope. You can also input a QTX or CXF file to make that the target to search your library. You can use the color mixer to um, give yourself a submit, uh, a, a target, and it will tell you which ones are the closest library colors again it's not it's, that one's already in there but uh, again you hope you see the point and perhaps the most interesting is where you input an image say this one and 
as you upload the image it gets palletized and the colors in the image uh, the, the colors in the palletized image then become search targets so you can find any of them or find your closest library colors to that you can do the same thing with an eyedropper if I'm looking for a green I pick that green there do that the search should then show me unfortunately you don't actually have any colors exactly close to that I think the delta E limit is 10 in this setting so uh, we didn't find a color but you get the principle right uh, what can we now do with our palette well uh, one thing we can do is print it uh, people like all sorts of short shade cards and all sorts of setups one thing one thing this allows you to do is to this split them into different sections you can have many sections you want here I put five in section one another thing you can do is you can drag and drop the colors to move them around another thing you can do is instead of sorting them by uh, color name you could probably sort them by hue for example um, you can print them in portrait you can print them in landscape you can filter out just show a few of them you can then print them on your printer you can download the PDF you can do almost anything you'd want to do uh, what else can you do with a printer with a palette I mean well you can export it exporting it uh, into Excel spreadsheets which might go into PLM system for example uh, with various data added on or ASL or ACO formats for putting into Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe software, or you can export a QTX or CXF format. Okay, uh, that's about what you can do with a the palette. There is actually another way you can display the colors uh, on screen uh, at different sizes, and then if you want to, you can choose to move them around to see how they look against each other. Uh, it's, it's a little bit of an add-on, really. Uh, what else, though? Well, mainly what you can do in the vendor side of things is you can assign palettes or colors to your vendor we've only got one vendor in this system uh, and I've already assigned three palettes to him um, but now I'm assigning only two so I'm unticking one and those palettes are now assigned to that uh, vendor or I could assign colors individual colors because I've assigned the whole of this palette they're all ticked but I could have not assigned palettes and just assigned one or two colors why would I want to uh, do such things well because I can then create a lab dip request say or a bulk dip for that vendor for that color on a particular fabric uh, I then say which division it's for which season it's for which year it's for and I'm going to go for Welsh red 6 Welsh red WR6 because I happen to know that this vendor has some lab dips to go against it so where if we go to workflow then which shows the whole lab dip approval uh, and can be filtered uh, and sorted in many ways because you will eventually get hundreds of these um, you will see at the top here that's our request that we've just sent and what the status is action required is to add QTX the QTX will be the QTX containing the lab dips for from the vendor he could have emailed them to you uh, or the vendor can log in and we'll show that now uh, and upload them himself so uh, this is the, the the basic color loop process so if I log out as palette controller and log in again as vendor I will explain the other users in a minute uh, I can then look at my workflow and see that I've been assigned uh, Welsh red on cotton and I'm being asked for a QTX by the way this little tag here allows you to add special urgent comments and it will then flash so that everybody can see it um, the other way you can communicate about colors uh, on a palette is you look at the threads so the palette will have a thread against it uh, and you can view it and it will say something like happy face color uh, somebody's told me I'm late so response could be sorry this could be any user in the system just tagging a whole thread alongside a color to keep control of what's happening it could be about um, courier packages or something okay back to the workflow uh, Welsh red I've I'm the vendor I've got to put a QTX submits against this I happen to have some QTX submits I click here to upload they've that's been they've been taking out the QTX file 
I'm going to pick three of them. I could remove some later. I could add comments saying please or can't get any blue or whatever else. Uh, I then submit those. I say OK. And now the status is pending, which means I'm waiting for the palette controller to approve it. I can look at my the, my submits in the job file, but I will show you how the uh, palette controller can look at the same thing. So let's log back in as the palette controller. Uh, because the palette controller can get to see something else, um, he, she can see edit, which the supplier didn't. By the way, as I mentioned before, you will see the whole screen. You don't have to pan across. It's just the way this video recorder works. Um, if I click on edit, I get to see the color data. I can see the color swatches, see different even each lab dip under the different illuminants. I can see the colorimetric data, the delta E's, delta H's, whatever. I can see the reflectance graphs of all the colors. Uh, I can see a nice little cute 3D plot of where they are in color space. Uh, I, and I can see the traditional 2D lab plots. Based on looking at all that data, I go back to them and I decide what I can do. I best can do commercial approval, drop, pending, whatever. Uh, if I approve one, it automatically the other, makes the other two a reject. And that's it. Now I go back to workflow status and we will see that the status is approved. Um, and the interesting thing is that because we've got quite a lot of Welsh red colors in here, uh, submits in here. If I choose to, I can say I want to see them on all vendors and all fabrics and go and I will then see some extra ones, uh, the all the ones that have actually been submitted uh, against. Some of them are repeats. That's why you see uh, they look like um, they, there are actually more submits, but I've been using the same um, demo QTX files, of course. But the point is uh, you can see all the history of the submits against this particular color by all your vendors on all your fabrics. And if you cho choose to, you can actually um, make a different one a standard just to see uh, where you're going with that. So you get a very good color history uh, report, if you like, in three dimensions. Right. Uh, that really sums up uh, the color approval loop system. Uh, there are various reports that also cover it, things like lab dip round times, vendor scorecards and the like. We can have, oh sorry, I have to pick a, a palette to do that. Um, vendor scorecards and the like. We have other reports and they, and they can be added. I should explain exactly what a vendor is. A vendor is somebody you've invented to be, it, uh, invited to be a vendor role. So it can be uh, anybody you invited you can you can choose as palette when you invite them you can choose uh, their user level either palette editor or vendor palette editors are simply people who can assist palette controllers they can create palettes they can edit palettes uh, they can add colors to them and they can share them and they can uh, print them they can export them but they can't deal with vendors there is another category of uh, user called a palette super editor which has all the rights of a palette controller but the only way you can get an extra uh, a, a palette super editor user in your team is to pay for one purchase an invite if you like uh, and you can start at there hundred dollars a year per extra user so it's not too expensive um, that I think is uh, the whole system uh, the only other things to say are that the uh, this is where the palette controller gets to put in all the various, you can add fabric codes and divisions and seasons and year, all the ones you want. Um, the lot, you can also see a log of everything that's happened and who did it and exactly when. Um, so that you, it's a very trackable system. Nobody can do anything in this, in the system, in the loops that you can't uh, follow and see on the logs. Uh, you have emails. Uh, also created in the system so that you can, um, for example, you can get an email telling you when somebody has submitted the lab dip or somebody can be sent uh, a lab, an email if they're um, 
lab dip is getting too late, for example, you can also have these lit up in red if the lab dip is getting too late, whatever you wish to do in such in that area. The last thing to say is that our contact section, um, we continuously improve things like Palette Manager, uh, and we're very keen to have feedback. If you have some suggestions of how to improve the, improve the system, uh, we will try our best to do it. Okay, that is Palette Manager. Um, I hope I've covered everything, and I hope you go to palettemanager.com and register and try it. Please do. Thank you.